Picture this, a tiny particle smaller than a grain of sand dropped into a cloud in hopes of squeezing out a few extra drops of rain. That's essentially cloud seeding, more like nudging the sky than flipping a weather switch. Yet online posts blamed those specks for the wall of water that caused record flooding this week. So I asked local scientists and lawmakers, can seeding really supercharge a storm? And is North Carolina on the verge of doing it? Here's what I found. It's a theory spreading fast, shared on social media, even echoed by members of Congress. Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene recently claiming, quote, they are controlling the weather, calling geoengineering deadly and dangerous. One of the most cited methods, cloud seeding, a decades-old technique mostly used to boost rainfall in drought-stricken farm areas. The CEO of Rainmaker, a Texas-based company, pushed back this week. We're talking about like sub centimeter amounts of precipitation, which is very consequential for farmers and ecosystems, but cannot come close to causing flooding unto itself. Cloud seeding involves flying planes into certain cold clouds to inject ice particles and encourage precipitation. While some of those flights happened in Texas, they were outside the flood zone and days before the storm hit. As a scientist, it's frustrating because sometimes you know, these things go viral for no reason. They're not well-founded. They're not consistent with the science. Atmospheric scientist Gary Lackman, who's modeled extreme storms for 25 years at NC State, says the physics just don't support the claims. So could that cause a huge flood? There are ways that you can influence uh, the weather, but you can't control weather systems. You can't make a flood here or a drought there. It's just that's not possible, uh, not with today's technology. Still, some North Carolina lawmakers have questions. We need to put a pause on any type of, of program that's being run right now until we have a better understanding of why we're having these, you know, 100 year weather incidences, you know, so frequently these days. Jonathan Almond introduced House Bill 362 to ban geoengineering in the state, one of at least 30 states considering similar legislation. I haven't found any evidence of geoengineering projects operating or in development here in the state. Still, House Bill 362 would slam the door before anyone tries. Supporters call it a precaution. Critics say it chases a problem that doesn't exist. We'll keep following the debate as it moves through the legislature. Liz McLaughlin, WRAL News.